Hey, give me that. Give me that. Shalom, sis. How you doing? How you doing, brother? Come on. Can you come closer? Come a little closer. We are Israel United in Christ. And we are here to show you what you're supposed to do today and throughout the day. Now, let me ask you a question. Today is Saturday, right? What exactly, according, according to God, let me ask you a question. According to God, do you know exactly what you are supposed to be doing today? Saving his people. Saving his people. Okay, okay. I like that answer. That's a good answer. But there's something specific that God has ordained for our people. And when I say our people, I'm talking about the people that are on this list right here. Those are our people. Right. He didn't give this rule to everybody. He only gave it to a certain group of people, a certain race, a particular group of people. A chosen few. That's right, a chosen few. You know what, give me Isaiah 58. I'm going to show you something, sis. I'm going to show you why we're out here. Because we're not, we're not out here to play games. Ain't no time for games. No time. the end game. No time for games. This is the end game. The end is near. Isaiah 58 and keep on one. First one. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 1. Read out. I want you to listen to this. Read. Cry aloud, spear not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and chew my people their transgressions, and the house of Jacob their sins. The house of Jacob their sins. The names that you see on this sign right here. That's the house of Jacob. Right. So we, the men that you see out here today, we are here to show you sin. What sin is and how to come out of that sin. Bring it out. And not only that, we're here to show you who you are according to the, God, the word of God. Right. Now, that scripture says to show my people, God has commanded us to show our people their sins that they're in. And what is sin? So let me ask you a question. What is sin? All wrongdoing. Okay, that, that's correct. It is all wrongdoing. But according to what? According to what? What is considered wrong what in your eyes? What is wrong? Uh, party. Women. Um, poor among them. Okay, poor among them. That's, that's good. Poor among them. We are the children. Son of God, you take the three, which is love, add it to your six, and you get nine, your equal state of being. Okay, okay. I want you to listen to the word of God. God is going to specifically explain to you what sin is. Because what you said, you said hormone, which is a good answer. I like Brothers that. Brothers going against our brothers. You got that. Two for one. But I want you to listen. Listen. I want you to listen to. I want you to listen to what God explains what sin is. Okay. I want you to listen very carefully. Read it. First John chapter three and verse four. Bring it out. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. God says sin specifically is the breaking of my laws. That's sin. Now, in order for you to know what God laws is, in order for you to know what sin you're in, you first must know the laws of God. Right. You understand that? All right, sis. So you said earlier it's the end game, right? So give me uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, uh, start at verse 10. So what does that mean for you and your people? We must unite, and we okay. must deliver what's necessary. And again, that's the turmoil okay. of each and one of us. Because our enemy, which we know is the Bill Gates, and all the evil that they're trying to commit. And mm -hmm. we must acknowledge that and stand and fight against it. Okay, so, all right, you said a lot. All right, you said a lot. So the thing is, is this, I'm going to show you that end game, but there's another thing that's required of you that the officer is going into. All right, read that. Second Peter chapter three and verse 10. Bring it out. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night 
So the day of the Lord is coming like a thief in the night. Meaning the, the day of destruction in this place, Babylon the Great, is coming like a thief in the night. So, sis, have you ever experienced somebody breaking into your house? Okay, did you know that it was coming? Did they leave a notice? Did they say, hey, here, here's, here's what you look for, right? They don't, right? They just come suddenly. The day of the Lord is going to come just like that. You understand? Right. Come on, read on. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Come on. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, uh -huh. and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. What's that talking about, sis? Yep. Death. It's talking about death, right? Through nuclear destruction, yep. right? So right now, our people are worrying about All-Star Weekend. We're worrying about all men of partying and reveling and all that, right? But what about the day of the Lord that's going to sneak up on you? That when those bombs drop, you better be ready. Bring it you understand? Out. You better be ready. Yep. But what does that take? Go ahead. And the, and the element shall melt with fervent heat. So there's no bunker. There's no uh, 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 doomsday shelter that anybody can run into. It says that in that day, the elements will melt with fervent heat. Come on. The earth also. Uh -huh. And the works that are therein shall be burned up. Go ahead. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. 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 So since you like, a lot of people say, all right, if that thing happened, I'm going to run. So it said even the earth and the things that's in it, the works thereof. So the thing is, you could set up for that, but there's nothing that could keep you safe but this Bible. That's right. You understand? Seeing that all those things shall be dissolved, that Babylon is going to be destroyed, read. What manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation uh -huh. and godliness? So what manner of person should you be? So that's, that's the kind of thing that we should be asking ourselves, sis. You understand that? That's why the officer is going into sin. And what is sin? You understand? But the thing is, is that here... We come here to teach our people those things that they don't know. What is sin according to the Bible? How do you escape that fire that's coming? The manner of person that you should be. How you should act, behave, conduct yourself while you're out in society. You understand? While you're dealing with your brothers. Bring it out. You understand? While brothers dealing with their wives. Or when, when uh, women are dealing with their husbands. Or when women are dealing with the children. Bring it or when out. the husbands are dealing with the children. You right. understand? Those manner of things have to be taught to us again, sis. You understand that? We lost those things. Yeah. We come to the point in society to where we forget who that enemy is that came up against us. Bring it out. Bring it out. So you're talking about, oh, the devil, uh, the enemy, this, that, and other, and then you said Bill Gates, right? Bill Gates is not the only one. No. Bill Gates doesn't work on his own accord. No. You understand? No. No. It's a, it's Bill, like Bill Gates is not the doctor that prescribes the medicine that keeps our people constantly coming back to the hospital that has one side effect after another. You understand? That's right. Hey, he doesn't do that by himself. He just got the money. He you understand? The money. He, he might have money to have a voice. That's what a lot of people is like. They have the money so I can say something. You understand? No. Or they will push this perpetually throughout his father did it. He ain't doing it. He going to teach his children to the do it. He's the same thing. It all from right, the because fathers. they are their forefathers. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Just like we are our forefathers. Yeah. And the thing is, is this. Our forefathers happen to be the people of the book. You know the original. The original, right? So the thing is, let's look at some of those things and that we got to do to clean ourselves up. But first, did you know your nationality? Do you know who you are? Fourth generation Cherokee. Fourth generation Cherokee, right? So the thing is this. That's on your father's side or your mother's side? Father's side. So that means that you would be from the tribe of Gad, according to the Bible. Right? Right. So you need to know that. So like, okay, how can we say that? Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. So this right here in Deuteronomy 28, these are curses. You have blessings and curses. But the thing is, is this. A lot of us would go straight to the blessings and the curse in, uh, in, in the Bible and don't deal with any of the curses. So we don't realize that when we grow up in church that these things apply to us. Right. All right, go ahead. Read, read, verse, uh, read verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. Bring it out. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently uh -huh. unto the voice of the Lord thy God Go to observe 
and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day Come on. that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth so the thing is is this those commandments that are here that was given by the Most High God to the Prophet Moses to put these things on the paper so that we today can see and read those things, right? These are some of the manners in which we should be. The commandments of God. That's you understand? Right. Also, these commandments, these are what have set us on high above all nations of the earth. All right? Let's go to, um, what you got? Let's get, um, no. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. Let's get... Verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 10. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the by the name of the Lord. And they shall be afraid of thee. Alright, so right now, nobody is afraid of us as a people. You understand that, sis? Right. But the thing is, is this. These commandments, these manners that we should keep, they are for us to, to abide by. To abide by. These are the things that keep us protected before the day of the Lord comes. You understand? So let's check out one of the commandments that the Most High God has given us. And then we're going to come back to Deuteronomy 28. All right? Let's get Deuteronomy 22 and 5. The curses that are here in Deuteronomy 28, they show us who we are, that we are the Israelites according to the Bible. But we're going to deal with it. I just wanted to point this out to you as one of the manners that we should keep. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 20. Two and five. Come on. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. All right. So the thing is, is this: this commandment is not something that's normally taught to us in the church. Did you hear that growing up? Because he came with that thing. And okay. And, and you, you need to break it down. I need to hear that. All praise. All praise to the Most High. All right. Read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Come on. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Go ahead. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Come on. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So you heard it that time, right? So now we're going to slow it down and go into it, right? Go ahead. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So... What are some things that women put on today that pertain to men that they used to not wear? Oh, all of the, the sex, all of the, you just naked. Naked? Just naked. But men are naked too. You come men in this are world naked. naked right? And like they said, like he said, it's abomination because women should not act like men and neither should they reveal themselves. They should be three fourths covered. Okay, and men so. men should not be wearing women's garments. Okay, so so what are some of those manly garments that women wear that cause them to act like a man? Baggy jeans. Baggy jeans? Oh. How about pants in general? Pants right? in general. Pants in general, right? Hey, I used to talk to uh, some sisters, they like, hey, they put on a pair of pants, they ready to scrap at any time. Exactly. You understand? Exactly. That's a manly spirit. A woman should be more feminine. You right, understand? Right. That is her purpose. Right. That is one of those manners mm -hmm. that will keep us uh, from that fire. Mm -hmm. If a woman walks in that feminine nature in a what? In a dress, dress. or right. a skirt. Fourths. You understand? Three-fourths. <laughs> you understand? Not necessarily three-fourths. You can't really put, you can't put a, a number on it. But what we can say is, according to the Bible, modest apparel. Mm -hmm. Because up. you can have a sister that'll have everything covered up, but it's super tight. So you can see all her yeah, assets. Yeah. You understand that's what I'm saying, true. sis? That's true. That's true. You understand? That still calls sin in the mind of a man. Right. You understand? Right. Oh, hell. Sometimes in the mind of a woman this day and age. Right. You understand? You have videos online where women slapping each other on the behind. Bring it up. Right. You understand? In that manly much. spirit, right? In that manly spirit. In that sodomite spirit. Very right? confusing. Very, very So confusing. the thing is, sis, is that right now we know today you didn't know, right? That you got on tights, right? Mm -hmm. That's the apparel of a man. Yep. So, the thing is, is this what you have to do? Switch it up. Switch it up, right? right. How That's you gonna right. switch it up? <laughs> Just more appropriate. Dress more, more appropriate. appropriate. Because beauty is in the eye of the okay. beholder. Okay. How how about skirts and dresses? Skirts because and dresses. you just said we was in the end time, right? Mm -hmm. 
And the end time is going to require us to make certain changes. That's and those changes are the manners that are in the Bible. Right. Those yeah. manners are people who should be uh, uh, in our communication. So we don't understand that sometimes the things that we wear, it communicates who we are. It right. communicates what we believe in. Right. It communicates the things that we are about. Right. So the thing is, is this. You have a woman that wear them pants. What you think she about? She about manly things. You have a woman that's in the skirt or a dress. What is she in? Into being more womanly. Being more feminine. Being a wife. Being a daughter. You understand? Being a mother. Being a grandmother. You understand? Being in her appropriate place. Right. Just like men. We don't. Because a lot of women, when we bring out that scripture, they say, hey, that's all on the women. What about the men? We in Atlanta. Read that. Go ahead. <laughs> Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So the thing is, is this. Even for men to wear women clothes and practice that act of being like a woman, that's inappropriate. That's an abomination according to the Bible. Right. You understand right. that? You understand that, brother? So that's why you have a lot of people that in all men are sin. But the thing is, is that turning back to these laws and commandments, that's going to keep us from that fire. Right, sis? Right. From a, from right now, we're in the end game, right? We know that fire is coming. Yes. So the thing is, is this, like we was going over with the sister. What's your name, brother? Tony. Tony? All right. Nice to meet you, Tony. I'm happy. So the thing is, is this. We was going into that there's a certain manner of person you should be before the Most High God comes back and bring his judgment on the earth. Right. You understand? Right. So, let's go, uh, so read that again from the top. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Go ahead, go ahead. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Go ahead. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. And a lot of women are out of order because us men are out of order. Right. You understand? Right. So, a lot of our men, they do what? They fall after their mama. They got an attitude like their mama. They turn out. their mother's clothes while she going out the house. Right. You understand? They do all manner of evil and wickedness. You understand? Even now today, you have men say, you know what? I'm going to chop off my rod. Or even if they don't chop off their rod, they do what? They get breast implants. I want to be more like a woman. Bring you get out. breast implants. Why? For what? That's not your natural purpose. Your purpose is to stand up for your people. That's to right. stand up and be the man of your household. You understand? All right? So... Let's get to uh, another one of those manners that we should be. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians was at 6 and 13. 3.16. 3, 16. Let's get that. Let's get that. Because the thing is, is this. All of our actions, they communicate things that we are about. Right. So what manner of person should we be in all manner of communication? You understand? And how we carry ourselves. How we speak to one another. How we deal with one another. Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, Go ahead. and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Come on. If any man defile the temple of God, he shall he shall God destroy. Uh -huh. So we have to sit back and consider these words of God. You know what? What are some ways that we are destroying ourselves as a people? How are we defiling our temple? How are we? Say again. How are we? Yeah. Are you asking? Yeah. I'm asking. I mean, we're not living right. We're not living right, right? What speaking. are some of those things that we do to defile our temple? Tattoos, drinking. Tattoos. Eat, eat, excessive eat, drinking. Eat it wrong. I mean, eating wrong. Okay. Know. Whatever eating gluttony. Gluttony, you know uh -huh. what I mean? Even even some of the foods though. I mean it's right. not healthy, you know. So right. you know, swine most of all. So exactly, you know, right? Uh, so that's according to the laws. That's one of those manners that we're supposed to do. Right, okay. right, right. Also, what about smoking? Yeah, most definitely. Smoking, right? Anything so smoking. sis, what you gotta understand is this. By you smoking on that, that, that black, that cigar right now, that's not good for you. That's destroying your temple. Right. You understand? And the thing is, is this. We love you enough to tell you to stop it. That's why. Right. That's right. To stop it. Stop destroying your temple. That's, That's right. one of those manners that we got to get back to. You right. understand? Before Most High God brings destruction on this place. Right. You understand? Because you just said the end time is here. Yeah. It's the end game, right? So we got to start lining up with the word of God to make sure that we're in line for the end game to make sure we don't get that fire. That's you understand? Right. That's right. You understand that, sis? Yeah. So that's part of it. Some of us yeah. used to smoke. But what we had to do, we had to throw that thing out. We had to get rid of that thing. You understand right. that? Right. 
to save our lives according to God's word. Right. You understand? Let's go back to uh, Deuteronomy 28. Yeah, let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. All right, come on. Right. Now, what you heard was the laws of God going over sin, sin that you want to put out of your life. Because guess what? We can't enter the kingdom with those problems, with that sin that we still have upon us. Right. God will not accept us. Uh, go to, go to uh, Ecclesiasticus 17.25. Ecclesiastes 17.25. I want to show you something, sis. Because in order, in order for us to be able to be looked upon as worthy to worthy to God, to be acceptable to God, we have to get rid of the sin that we have in us. We have to get rid of it. Read that. Ecclesiasticus chapter 17 and verse 25. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. Read that last part again. And offend less. So we come out here and show you your sins so that you can offend God less. Right. Less. Because look, it's a lot of sin that is upon us. We got a lot of sin, like 30 years, 40 years worth of sin in our bodies. But we the man that you see here today, we are here to show you how to come out of that so that we can offend God less. And so that when he does return, we'll be one of those chosen that are saved by him. You understand? Read that again. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision the tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth. <laughs>